who do you, Carrie, would you like to move the resolution for the profession? Uh, would you like to second the resolution for the professionals for the gym at Reach. Uh, Green Reach? Reach? I can. I'm sorry? Sure. Yes. Okay. Yes. My pleasure. There, because I don't want to ask Leslie to put her <laughs> in a difficult spot. Really? Really? Ladies and gentlemen. about that, Leslie? <laughs> it's a tough one. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. Yes. <laughs> no problem. We're going to start the meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, call the meeting to order, and we do have quorum, so we'll continue on. Uh, statement of the Council of Commissioners. We would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Mohawk people. So thank you very much. Um, adoption of the agenda. Are there any additions? Could I have somebody move the adoption of the agenda, please? So moved by uh, Teresa and Aguirre. Do I need a second? Yeah. And someone to second? Second. And David Fournier will second. Thank you very much. Opposed? Abstentions carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, now we're on item four, the school presentation. We are lucky enough to have Mel Bruno presenting. Uh, I will direct you to, and I'll be following there in a minute. We'll be going in the hallway. Yep. And uh, I'll let uh, Vice Chair Craig Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Vice Chair Craig Davis. Uh, Craig Davis. Craig. Listen <laughs> for Craig. Jeez. Sorry about that. We'll make the uh, introductions. All right, thank you. So we'll, we'll go on to that. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for coming. We are here at our third fabulous council show, joined by parents, faculty, staff, and some students from Mont Saint Bruno Elementary School. They were very bravely involved in Jésus-Jésus-Christ, a challenge to create and perform their very own spoken word and poetry. We have three. Oh, this is terrible. A couple of weeks ago, I had to go with a whole bunch of folks from the board, a couple of mayors, cram into the school with Neville and judge the poetry of young people. And we brought to you tonight three of, of the finest, three of the finalists, and they're going to present to you their poetry, their thoughts, their ponderings in French. You should be excited. So, Adam Dutrie, you're up first. Please take a podium. <laughs> Ils ont dit écrire quelque chose d'important à cette génération. Et qu'est-ce que cette génération connaît mieux que l'Internet? Mais ce texte est sur la mauvaise influence. Donc pourquoi est-ce que je parle de l'Internet? C'est très simple. C'est le royaume de l'influence. Ce n'est pas pour rien qu'on appelle les gens à l'Internet des influenceurs. Mais quand juste une seule personne a des mauvaises intentions, ça, ça ne passe pas trop bien. Je pourrais donner plein d'exemples de tendances qui mettent des personnes à l'hôpital, mais ce texte ne peut pas avoir 25 pages. Je pense aussi que toi, tu connais des exemples. Ne crois pas tout ce que tu vois. N'aie pas peur de demander l'aide, c'est normal d'être En fait, c'est plus sécuritaire de demander de l'aide dans cette situation -là. Mais l'Internet fait plus que te dire de faire des actions dangereuses. Il te montre juste les succès sans te montrer les conséquences négatives. Quand il y a une personne qui dit les mauvaises choses, il y a probablement quelqu'un d'autre qui dit le contraire, qui dit même peut-être quelque chose de positif. La tragédie, c'est qu'il y a plus de mauvaises influences que de bonnes. Je trouve injuste que j'écris ce texte négatif sur l'Internet 
Quand il y a des personnes qui essaient vraiment de faire du bon. Si tu veux être la personne intelligente que tout le monde dit que tu es, j'ai une suggestion. En fait, elle est très facile. S'il te plaît, arrête. Ne fais pas ces choses. Protège-toi et sois une personne intelligente. Si tu vois un de tes amis qui veut faire quelque chose de pas si intelligent, inspiré d'un influenceur, n'a pas peur de lui demander de lui dire d'arrêter. Et peut-être que tu as sauvé ton ami. Je sais à quel point c'est difficile d'aller contre l'opinion d'un ami, mais c'est mieux de faire le bon choix pour votre sécurité. En plus, tu serais fier de toi. Donc, ce que j'essaie de dire, c'est ne sois pas influencé négativement par des personnes sur l'Internet. Prends le temps de réfléchir avant d'agir et s'il te plaît, sois intelligent. Great six students with more profound thoughts and words than many adults. It's quite impressive. Emma, Emma, Celeste, Madonna, you're up next. Imagination. Imagination. Esprit, innovation, courage. Imagine a world entre des créations fabriquées par des rêveurs. Voyage et vol dans ton monde d'évasion et de joie. Ne te fais pas de tomber dans la lune et de trouver des points de vue qui n'ont jamais été explorés. Les traditions sont faites pour garder la nation uniforme, mais chaque personne a droit d'avoir sa propre façon de voir les choses. Les traditions peuvent nous enchaîner. Être élevé par la société et être conçu pour être une personne choisie pour toi est désespérant. Libère-toi de ce cercle vicieux et trouve tes propres mots pour t'exprimer. Ne cherche pas des réponses et des valeurs conçues par quelqu'un d'autre. Moi, je fouille les connaissances écrites pour en créer des nouvelles. Toi aussi, tu dois façonner les pensées qu'il me faut pour évoluer. Imagination. Esprit, innovation, courage. Imagine un monde entre les créations fabriquées par des rêveurs. Mûrir et croître en maturité et comprendre la création, petite comme grande. Laisse ton imagination te voler du monde réel et trouve des secrets et de l'inspiration pour les autres. Tant que tu es là et que tu peux te faire des propres jours, avoir l'esprit complètement détruit n'est pas facile à prendre. Avec l'imagination, il y a la persévérance et le courage de continuer. Ton imagination peut être une protection ou même de l'intelligence jamais dévoilée. Notre monde se détruit sous nos pieds, mais une tête avec un potentiel comme la tienne nous propose l'espoir du changement. Imagination, esprit, innovation, courage. Imagine un monde entre tes créations fabriquées par des rêveurs. De l'imagination, on en a tous besoin. Rappelle-toi, l'imagination est ton pouvoir, ta force, ton intelligence, ton moyen de persévérer et de créer. Ton raisonnement est la source de tes rêves. Exploite ce don avec sagesse. Amazing performance. This and the last one is uh, the one we chose as judges as the most outstanding. They're all outstanding. But uh, Vedam Kashyap, you're up. Imagination is the door of creativity, and innovation is sweet part. With the confidence in yourself, it is enough to see the things that you can do to realize. You can travel in the universe, curious, discovering, or going to the edge. All this starts with your imagination. Si personne n'a d'imagination, notre monde en Corée s'arrêtera. Je pense que c'est notre situation courante. Parfois, j'ai l'impression que ma créativité diminue aussi. Je connais une solution pour tout le monde. Si, si on suit nos passions, nous, nous pouvons avoir une nouvelle génération d'architectes. D'artistes, innovateurs, architectes qui font de façon notre réalité. Imagination et un trait humain, c'est ce qui rend notre esprit espèce dominante. Si nous n'avions rien imaginé, notre monde n'aurait pas été très développé comme un monde, comme, 
comme notre société actuelle. Peut-être c'est une mauvaise influence qui détruit notre imagination. Les plateformes et médias, médias sociaux sont incroyables pour promouvoir l'imagination, mais parfois ce n'est pas le cas. Quelques personnes d'influence peuvent encore remplir le cerveau des millions de personnes. Mais s'il nous arrive de vivre personnellement ce qui est bon et ce qui est mauvais, nous pouvons utiliser l'Internet comme un réseau qui fallait les pensées du monde entier. Avec nos imaginations collectives, les possibilités sont limitées. Je pense qu'avec une bonne attitude, une imagination, une population, un esprit, la race humaine n'a aucune limite. Nous pouvons construire un sensuel dans l'espace, une chanson, une chanson que vous ne pouvez pas oublier, une invention qui peut résoudre tous les problèmes de la mort. Tout ce que nous avons besoin de faire, c'est d'utiliser notre grande imagination. Comme Napoléon Bonaparte l'a si bien dit, l'imagination gouverne le monde. Merci pour avoir fait attention à ce bonjour. Just to, to say hi to the crowd, to say thank you. I'm sorry, I really got this is your fault. These are the adult allies who have provided such an opportunity for these young people. So you get to say hi, and really can't hide behind the kids. If you have a couple of small tokens, thank you very much. And I hope uh, somebody else comes back and tells us more poetry in the future. Thanks. Well, I'm giving you. Oh, much I've done. Finished. It's hard for me to read that guy. The mic is on. Oh, yeah, that's over there. Emma Celeste Lagana. Emma. 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 Alan Dupuis. Thanks for another fabulous evening of entertainment and student engagement. We've got to go back to council, so everybody have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.
Good. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope everyone enjoyed the uh, our students from uh, Mount Bruno. They did a fantastic job, and it was nice to have that here. So, uh, congratulations on uh, on them winning the competition and for presenting it to us. Thank you very much. Uh, so we'll go on to regular business. Uh, approval of the minutes. Approval. Adoption of the minutes of the regular meeting of April the 18th, 2023. Can I have somebody move and then second and we'll keep the same order as we go through? So I can't really see anyone. I can move it. Moved by David Fournier and seconded by Kevin Scott. All right. Uh, the adoption of the minutes. Any changes or corrections, John? No changes. No. Okay, thank you. Uh, business arising from the minutes of the regular meeting of April 18th. There were none. Adoption of the minutes of the special meeting of May 2nd, 2023. Again, David and, uh, and Kevin. Any changes or any corrections in the minutes, John? No, Mr. Chair. No, thank you very much. Then business arising from the special minutes of the minutes of the special meeting of May the 2nd. Lucy? No. no? Okay, thank you. Uh, item number six, questions from the public. Uh, we have 30 minutes. Are there any questions? Are we anybody online or is it just in the hall? We may, uh, no, nobody online. Okay. We are public in person. Yep. Any questions to the council? No, no, sorry. I was trying to look you <laughs> Okay, not a problem. So I'll, I'll take that as no and we can move on to the next item. All right. Thank you. Um, reporting on the objectives of our commitment. To success plan. Yes. Um, I want to, I, there's a document in the folder, but I would like to be able to um, share it. Okay. Um, I want to make sure I'm able to share. Okay. Oh, John. Yeah. I just saw that Anna's trying to get yeah. it. I learned it right. Oh, you did? Okay. I'm trying to share, John, but I don't see the button to share. Do I have access to share? Yeah. What am I missing? Screen sharing. Yeah, there. Um, so I, I wanted to share uh, with you, it's, it's not like a, a, a big report on uh, the commitment to success, but rather um, the, um, uh, the targets that were set to us by uh, the Ministry of Education. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted to, to share with you the targets that were shared with us. And also I wanted to share with you uh, what the targets will be for Riverside in the new commitment to success. So it's not the full new commitment to success will we'll present uh, the full commitment to success plan in, in uh, June for adoption. Mm -hmm. um, but for tonight only, um, I thought I would give you a, a very quick look at uh, the uh, targets given by the Ministry of Education to the uh, school service centers and the school board of the province. Uh, the Minister of Education uh, developed a strategic plan. Uh, they have identified um, objectives, goals, orientation, targets uh, for the series of, of objectives that they give themselves uh, as, as a ministry. Um, out of these uh, objectives, they have identified some that uh, they want us to uh, show in our commitment to success plan. So the one that I will be showing you tonight are only the one identified by the ministry uh, that we have an obligation to report on at the end of the uh, at the end of each of the school year. Uh, you will see that many of the goals are very similar to the goal that we have now, uh, uh, to the exception of a couple new ones. So the first one is about schools uh, student success. And I put in the gray the French version because it's the official version. And in a bold, I put the English uh, translation for our commitment to success plan. So the graduation rate, which is the first one after, seven, after the seven year cohort, at the ministry level, the starting uh, target is at 84.1%. So that's the current 
last year uh, uh, success rate. And the ministry is aiming for the province to get an 86.8%. So at Riverside, our current or our starting uh, target is at 88.5%. And we're aiming to get a 90% after five years. So right from this first uh, goal, you can see that at Riverside, we're already uh, over the ministry target. Okay. Uh, the second one is the uh, graduation, it's the um, success rate of boys. Um, even though at Riverside, we've been working a lot on developing notions of equity, diversity, and inclusion, we've made comments to the minister that for us, Success is for all and not just for boys or for girls. We want it to be very inclusive, uh, but our recommendation did not uh, was not retained. Uh, so uh, we are keeping the success rate of boys because this is what the ministry wants us to um, uh, to, uh, to follow. Um, so at the ministry level for the province, um, the um, rate for success of boys is at 80.1%. And then we'd like in five years to raise it at 82.5%. At Riverside, we're at 85.7%. And we are aiming to have a success of 87%. Again, second objective, you can see that Riverside, we're already over the, uh, the target. The third one is uh, the success of students uh, with uh, disabilities or social mis uh, maladjustment or learning difficulties. At the provincial level, the starting target is at 62.2%, uh, and uh, the ministry is aiming for uh, everybody in the province to have an end target at 63.8%. Uh, at Riverside, we start at 73.6%, and we're aiming to have uh, an increase at 75%. Uh, so again, the third one, you can see that Riverside is also above uh, the general uh, province. The uh, fourth one, I'll talk a little bit on the fourth and uh, the sixth one. So there are two um, objectives that were given by the Minister of Education that pertains to French um, uh, mother tongue, so français langue maternelle. Uh, for those who were present with us when we first created the uh, past, uh, well, the current, uh, I should say, commitment to success, um, we had uh, told the ministry that these targets don't apply to us. Uh, so I put uh, non-applicable. So the first one is uh, the proportion of, of students that would uh, succeed their French mother tongue um, <laughs> exam uh, at the end of uh, grade four. We don't have that target because we don't have that exam. So again, there is some uh, percentage that are there, but zero for Riverside. The, the one after that is the success rate of students on grade six on a mandatory uh, ministry exam in math. Um, this one we're keeping because it has nothing to do with the language component. It's the math. Um, and uh, maybe it's a coincidence, but uh, the province is at 66% uh, success rate, aiming for a 75% increase. Um, not increase, I'm sorry, a 75% success rate. And Riverside has the same uh, the same target. So we start at 66% and we're aiming to reach 75% success rate. The sixth one is also one uh, that has the français langue dans segment. And this one, it's at the high school level. So again, does not apply to Riverside. I put it there for you to know that these objectives are there for... Uh, our uh, French ever centers in the province, but we are not taking this objective. Um, however, because of who we are, we decided to keep our objective on language proficiency, and we put proficiency in the two language of instruction, and we put one for elementary and one for high school. We put a 75.3% success rate at elementary, aiming for an 80%, and a 67.69% um, success rate to into a seventy-five percent. So this one is very unique to us at Riverside. Mm -hmm. um, the next orientation is uh, has to do with vocational. It used to be in the old strategic plan. Well, 
the current, I should say, strategic plan for the ministry, but it wasn't identified as something that we had to put in our uh, commitment to success plan. So now this year, it is added to the, uh, the commitment to success plan. And the ministry is aiming at um, uh, taking count of students who are starting a, mm. a vocational training program um, and finishing within three years. Most programs are uh, of a duration of one to two years. Some exception goes over a little bit two years. So to put a three years uh, timeline to finish um, a vocational training program is quite reasonable. Uh, at the province level, the success rate is at 80.9%, aiming for an 84.9%. In Riverside, we're at an 82.8%, aiming for an 86.8%. So again, uh, a little higher than the province for that one. Uh, the fourth one, uh, not the fourth one, I'm sorry. The other um, orientation is um, about the special uh, projects that we have in our schools. So Sparitude, uh, Aritude, uh, IT, uh, IB, all of these special project tag that we have in our schools. The Minister of Education really wants students to have an opportunity uh, as much as possible to go to one of those programs. So this objective is really to measure the, uh, the participation level of our students in one of those projects. Um, you will see here that uh, we are a little bit below. Um, this is an objective that really belongs into the school, but it's given at the commitment to success plan. Um, but um, the school board doesn't decide that we open more of these projects. These projects are open with the schools. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep track of them, see if we can get a little bit more students that would enroll in one of them, making them more available for more of our students. It starts at 44.6% in the province and uh, the province is aiming as a 75%. Since we're starting a little bit lower, we're starting at a 38%, we put our target a little bit lower at 69%. Uh, the last one, uh, we, we, uh, we were, uh, told that it has to be um, in, our, in our commitment to success. Uh, but again, it's not something uh, that we are creating. It's something that uh, the ministry will be creating. So basically what the ministry uh, is asking us to do is to, um, uh, to use um, a framework that will be developed by the Ministry of Education on students' well-being. We don't know what it looks like right now. Uh, we haven't seen it, um, but we're told this is something that we should be using. So the minister said that at this very moment, nobody's using it because it's not even created. We haven't seen it. But the goal is that in five years from now, 100% of the school service centers and the school board would be using that, uh, that framework on students' well-being. Um, it is a, an objective that... We weren't sure that it was going to remain as one of the objectives from the Ministry of Education for us, because as I, I, was, I was telling you at the very beginning, is that in the strategic plan from the Ministry of Education, there are many objectives. These are just the ones that were indicated as must be implemented in our commitment to success. So it could have been an objective given to the Ministry of Education, but mm -hmm. it was requested that we add it in our commitment to success. The goal would be, even though... Um, the, the full length of the strategic plan of the ministry hasn't been published yet, right? These are just uh, targets that were shared with us. We got, you know, the, the, the big lines and the objective from the ministry. Uh, we're still waiting for the documents that would be attached to that. But because the Ministry of Education wants us to adopt our new commitment to success plan by the end of June, um, we are working on... Uh, putting together all these objectives based on the consultation process that um, Jessica did with her educational mm -hmm. um, services uh, team. And um, if there are some changes that the ministry asks us to do, or if the ministry changes its mind on some of them, we will readjust it for the beginning of the school. But at least the minister will have something in his hands, will be able to tell us, you know, feedback, on, on where we're aiming um, for the next five years. 
What we are also, uh, myself and, um, and Chantal, we've attended a few training session on um, the commitment to success plan, what it should look like, uh, what should we put in there, what's relevant, you know, uh, and so forth. So um, the commitment to success, we're aiming at adding a um, few um, pages, fewer pages than we have now, uh, because we clearly understand that a plan is not a report. So making a plan should not just describe everything that we do, but it should be really aiming at what do we do well, what do we need to improve, and how are we going to go about it? So we have to kind of keep on these um, on these topic. Um, and anyway, I think you'll be pleased when we'll uh, we'll bring it forward for uh, that council that final consultation at the end of the, the end of June. Super. Um, very well. Thank you very much for all of that. Are there any questions or comments from anyone in the council? I see a hand going up. I can't. Oh, yeah. Ariette, sorry. Ariette, yes, Ariette, sorry. Yes. Um, I'm, I have a question. What does, in French, what does HDAA mean? Les élèves, uh, by, it's, a, it's an acronym for students with uh, yeah. handicap oh. and um, <coughs> uh, les élèves, I'm, I'm not sure exactly all the, the letters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this, this so is... HDA, you know, like avec uh, des difficultés d'apprentissage. Okay, so yeah. this, is, this would be every student with an IEP? Yes, correct. And, okay, and um, and so it's not just the boys, though. No, no. The boys have their own, just the boys. Yeah. Okay. Success rate of the boys and then success rate of students uh, with uh, learning disability. I'm just a little bit curious as to, like, we are aiming for a success rate of 90% uh, graduation rate after seven years. We're currently at 88.5. And I, but our success rate on mathematics and proficiency in the two languages are not that high. So how are we graduating students with when they, how, how did we get that rate when we have 66% uh, of students who are uh, have a success rate in math in grade six, and uh, and 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 we have uh, 60, 75 or sixty seven percent at the elementary and high school who are proficient in the two languages. How I will let uh, Jessica give you a, a great you, explanation. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, I'm excited. I'm excited that you're asking the question. First of all, just a clarification. <laughs> a clarification in mathematics, what is being looked at is the percentage of students achieving 70% or higher. So oh, it's not okay. success rate, right? It's being looked at is between 70 and 100. So that's an important yes. clarification. It means we have a, a number of students we have to move from the 60s and upwards, right? So they're still at risk, but they're, they're, they're successful. They're just not proficient. And okay. it's the same thing in the uh, proficiency in the two languages of instruction. It's not the success rate we're looking at in either language. It's the percentage of students achieving 70% uh, and above in both French and English. So that's a big difference as well to consider. And just a point of information in terms of our graduation rate, in the latest information from the ministry, if we're looking not at the seven year graduation rate, but at the six years, so we still, we're talking about a group of students who still have a whole year left to, to improve on that grad rate. We already have a 90.4 uh, grad rate after six years in the incoming figures. So we are well positioned at this time in terms of our grad rate. And uh, what we're looking to do through our commitment to success plan is to not only ensure that our students are successful in, and graduating at minimal level, but that they're actually able to contribute fully. Uh, and that's why we're looking at proficiency, meaning 70% and above. Thank you so much for that clarification. And I'm, um, I am not one who likes to niveler par, par le bas, so uh, <laughs> as we say in French. So I'm very happy to see that, uh, that we're aiming at um, raising the level of proficiency, which is, is key to our students 
being able not only to graduate uh, from high school, but to go on to do whatever they want to do, be it vocation, technical at CEGEP or for university programs. Um, I'm very happy to see that. But to me, that's very important. Thank you very much. Great explanation. Are there any other questions or comments? No? Okay. So we'll move on to the next item. It is the chairman's report. <coughs> I've submitted in your in your package. Um, since the last council meeting in, in April, been very busy. Uh, some of the highlights, of, in, especially in, in preparation for the spring conference, and as well as preparing for next year's conference, in, which will be held in, in hosted by Eastern Townships, and it'll be hosted at the Chateau Bromont as well so i've been working on those as well uh as well we were given the opportunity to meet with madame uh, isabelle poulet who is the mna for la part uh, a caq member uh she came to the office here for about an hour no two hours almost two hours and a good discussion we that we had with her i was also i represented uh our board at her opening of her office in uh, ville moyne so I went there to represent Riverside. So that was good. Um, as well as this past month, been very busy. Uh, for three days, uh, we, uh, the QESBA hosted the Canadian School Board's Board of Directors meetings here in Old Montreal. So hosted them. Uh, we had meetings over two days and well, very productive. And they enjoyed the, the fact that we hosted them here in Montreal. So that was good. As well as last week, hosted the uh, the our spring conference in Mont Saint Sauveur. Uh, I think it was well attended. Over 260 uh, people attended across from across the province. I think there was some very interesting. There were a lot of interesting uh, seminars and um, as well as as our speakers, key speakers. So I think. Uh, all the impressions I got, I have received have been very positive of the spring conference. And just as another note, uh, Kim Hamilton will be sending out a, uh, a doodle uh, survey monkey to uh, truly uh, identify the pros, the, the pluses and the negatives and how we can improve. And we'll go from there for the next year's con uh, conference as well. So uh, again, usual committees and uh, that I always attend. So that's the extent of my report. And is there any other questions? I'll be happy to answer. No, great. Thank you very much. Uh, the next item is the DG's report. Um, again, many, many uh, meetings, administrative meeting for operation, but uh, I will give you the highlights of some of the most uh, interesting um, event that I attended. Um, you will understand that uh, those last few days, uh, many of the meetings that I attended or workshop or webinar was, uh, they were aligned with uh, the deposit of Bill 23. Uh, this is making uh, a lot of people talk, uh, briefs are being uh, uh, created to be uh, shared with uh, the Minister of Education. So my association, you know, Association of Director General in the, on the French sector of the province, um, I sit at the, the Conseil Supérieur de l'Education on uh, one of their uh, working committee. Um, when the, uh, the bill was uh, deposited, it created a little bit of a chaos, you know, in a system uh, in the, for many instances. Um, so it took a, it took a, a, a lot of space. Uh, for those of you who may not be as familiar, the bill uh, speaks about uh, the role of the Director General uh, in link with the Ministry of Education, a direct link of the Ministry of Education, uh, the power of the um, Conseil d'administration for the for the French sector. I mean, it doesn't say the commissioners, but it is implied. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see where they would go. And the creation of... Uh, Institutes of Excellence uh, in Education. These are the three main area of that bill. 
While you're on Bill 23, may I yeah. just to inform everyone, I've been called to a meeting on June the 7th, I do believe, to present on behalf of QESBA at the Bill 23 hearings with Minister of Red Bill. So I just wanted to have to inform you. Okay, sorry. Um, on Madame Poulet, Madame Poulet did come and meet with us. Um, I had a few conversations with Madame Poulet. She's very generous. Uh, uh, she already offered, you know, uh, some of her students to uh, be nominated for uh, a perseverance uh, bursary uh, on her district. And uh, last week, uh, she distributed trees in some of her schools as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know Heritage and Royal Charles uh, benefited from uh, getting the trees from her. Um, we took an opportunity as well to uh, explain to her that um, not only uh, does uh, Bill 96 uh, may have an impact on you know on, on us as a, as an English entity, uh, but also Bill 21 and Bill 40, uh, and we had to explain why these other bills may also impact the community. So that was also uh, a bit of a teaching moment, you know, mm -hmm. for somebody who is in power and may have a power of influence when she goes to the uh, National cool. Assembly. Um, working on the Commitment to Success Plan as we were presenting tonight. So we attended quite a bit of PD, um, one with uh, Monsieur Pierre Collaret from the University of Trois-Rivières, and Chantal was with me on that one. One with uh, Megan Webster's, where we did some strategic planning with the English DGs, and one with Marie-Hélène Blais as well with the University of Sherbrooke. A um, couple of uh, as well uh, on technology. Uh, the Ministry of Education is uh, really uh, promoting the use of data uh, on our new commitment to success, but in general. So this is something that's that's really recurrent uh, with the, the help of our own technology and educational services here. We use uh, a platform that's called Power BI to extract a lot of our data, but the ministry wants to put a dashboard available to school board and school service centers directly on the web on their own website. So this is something that will come uh, for the public to even look at and see, you know, how we're doing in comparing, you know, with province and a uh, similar uh, size uh, school board. Um, I attended as well uh, a little bit on vocational uh, training. Um, I attended a, a one working session where we talked about uh, the creation of a new uh, short program. What's happening right now in the province is that because of shortage of workers, uh, a lot of uh, industry are hiring people without training and they are training people internally so it's creating a demand at the ministry level to create shorter program a study in vocational um and there's a there's a bit of a fear in the industry and there's a fear in the centers that some of the programs that we have may disappear so this one in particular that i attended to is uh linked to stationary engine mechanic program, which is a program of two years that we have at St. Judy. And uh, there's a demand from the industry to create a shorter version of that program to be able to have people on the industry much quicker. Since this is a program, they require a lot of uh, health and safety issue because they're working with boilers, they're working with AC, they're working with you know a lot of uh, gas and things. Um, there's a there's a risk factor, you know, that people may get hurt on the job. So a lot of debate on that. Minister uh, Dreville uh, puts uh, uh, an objective on the uh, on the commitment to success plan as well, and uh, on vocational. He really wants to uh, bring a lot of emphasis in vocational training for the next five years really increasing, you know, the level of, of, uh, the, of the of uh, certification that our students are, are getting. Um, on that on that note, uh, I always I also want to share with you, and I, I shared it last time, but, you know, our students keep uh, winning. So we have a student in Brickling at uh, uh, Access Royal Oak <laughs> who is um, – one, uh, which is called les, les Olympiades de la Formation Professionnelle. And for mm -hmm. those of you who are not familiar with that, it is something that happened. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a worldwide event. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a student, uh, Miguel, Miguel uh, Massa, uh, 
Uh, Miguel uh, finished first at the regional level, so at the Montérégie, that has to be like a, a competition in the Montérégie. He won first uh, first place, uh, so he ended up going to the provincial level, which was last week, uh, and uh, he won the gold again at wow. the provincial level. So he will be representing Quebec and um, Brickling uh, in Winnipeg. They have taken the the plane today, and they are in the Windy City uh, this evening, and we'll be competing at the Canadian level. So we're we're cheering for him to get the gold. Yeah. If he gets the gold, then he goes to uh, another country to compete for Canada. So wow. that's interesting. It's the first for us at uh, Riverside. I Great. think Ariette has a question on vocation. I saw her hand up, yeah. <laughs> Ariette. You're on mute, mute Ariette. Sorry. I thought we had another student a couple of years ago who had also won for bricklaying, but I may be wrong. Uh, no, no, you, you're correct, but now not to that level. Not to that level. That's um, correct. My question was initially about the um, the shorter programs and the the need for uh, to, to and that the difficulties in recruitment, if you want, for longer programs. We're experiencing the same thing in Conquet at Champlain. Yeah. I was wondering if you're, um, uh, which is where I work during the day, uh, but um, I was wondering if you were looking, I, I have also heard this uh, because of the shortage of, uh, of labor uh, that, you know, uh, it's the employers don't want to, they, they, they're doing internal training. I was wondering yeah. if you had, if you were looking at, um, uh, um, formation alternance travail études uh, and also uh, to train like in the industry. So I understand perhaps the need to provide the safety, the health and safety training in the beginning, but if it allows uh, students to be trained, I don't know, maybe one or two days a week and to work the other three days a week, is that something that we are going to look at in a and to be able to? Uh, I know it's not possible for every program, but for machinery fix and for you know, like I was just wondering if that's something we're considering. We are doing alternance travail études in many of our programs actually because it's very popular with the students. You know, working three days in the industry mm -hmm. and doing two days in school. We also, uh, we were one of the first one to even introduce the hybrid model of when they come in uh, in person to have some things even online. Uh, it's not possible for all of our program. Obviously, it's easier mm -hmm. for uh, in administration. So in, in accounting, for example, the students will do the Atomos Travail Etude, three days in the industry, two days in the center, but the two days in the centers is a hybrid model where they can do it from home, actually. So um, we have great cohorts in, in accounting because of that. We are able to retain a lot of our students. Good. The program, some of the programs I have high have a higher prerequisite. So a program like a stationary and mechanic, it's a program that has a higher prerequisite in math, mm -hmm. uh, English and French. So right from the get-go, it's a little harder to get in. Um, two, it's a two years commitment. So not everybody wants to commit to that. Three, it's a little further for us, you know, like uh, at St. Judy, uh, public transportation is a little harder because RTL doesn't go to St. Judy. So the students coming from Montreal, they have to take many different kind of buses. So they have to take the metro or they have to take a bus to come to the South Shore, then take the RTL, go to St. Judy. From St. Judy, they have to take another type of bus to go to the centers. Um, it takes a lot of dedication and, and uh, perseverance. We usually have a full cohort every year. Uh, we can also have a cohort mid-year. Uh, however, we don't always have a full cohort for that specific program. But I would say um, that is probably the program where it's a little harder. All of our other programs, we have full cohort. I was reading an article this weekend um, that the uh, Centre de Construction sur l'île de Montréal was saying that they did not open a bricklayer uh, group this year. And we have a full, we have 25 students in that program. Wow. And we'll do, we do out of the study in the sense that in bricklaying, uh, students were not allowed to enter um, a construction uh, site 
before they got their diploma. But now they are allowed uh, this year to get a uh, permis d'apprenti and are allowed to go on on the site and do some of the work, not all of the work, but some of the work. So it also helped to recruit some of our students to do this kind of uh, this kind of work. Um, in um, some of the program, like a bricklaying, you can understand that a hybrid model doesn't really work either because, you know, you can't break virtually. It's, uh, we're not there anyway. <laughs> Maybe one day, but we're not there yet. Uh, so it's a little harder, you know, and some of the very much hands-on uh, one. Yeah. Uh, but we do as well, uh, other than the Autonance Travail Etude, we do like, uh, uh, what they call in French, an entrée continue. So you can come and register every okay. month instead of just registering in September. Yes, so there's yes. many times in the year where oh. you can join the cohort. Yeah. So you, you just yeah. finish in different time. Okay. That's great. We try different it's ways yeah. to be uh, innovative. Bit like rack a little bit like you. That's correct. That's great. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very Thank much. You. Welcome. Thank you. Any, um, do you want to continue on? Or you just... just a few more things. Yeah. I had a few meetings just on the new land that we bought in uh, Dallas Savannah because we have neighbors who are uh, contacting us, you know, to see if we can sell <laughs> a little piece of that land to them. Uh, we had a few meetings with the principal as well to look at uh, how they can optimize the use of their mezzo money. Uh, and share best practices. It was very welcome with the principal. We did a roundtable discussion on that. Mm -hmm. um, and I did a few visits. Um, visit uh, Mont Bruno uh, that we had guests tonight. Uh, we also at the Mont Bruno event, we had the mayor of uh, Longueuil that was there and the mayor of Mont Bruno that was there yeah. as well. Um, visited Cedar Street, Helen Napper, St. Jude, Royal Child. Terry Fox went for the reading week. I would say that's the end of my report for now. Busy as always. Busy as always. <laughs> Any questions or comments for Lucy? Seeing none, we'll move along. Uh, the parents committee report. <clears throat> I will be reading that. Okay, thanks Teresa. So the the RSBPC met on May 1st, 2023. Special guests included Lucy Roy, Director General of RSB, and Paul Dion, Chair of the South Shore Educational Foundation. Mrs. Roy explained the status of our EDI initiative and EDI mission statement. Mr. Dion shared a presentation about the South Shore Education Foundation. He explained the South Shore Education Foundation's mission as a registered charitable organization to fund special projects at Riverside and the foundation's ability to issue tax receipts to donors. Following email correspondence with Monsieur Bergeron, RSB Director of Finance, the use of the unused PC budget for this year was approved to fund a special scholarship of $200 per school for the graduating grade six students and the graduating high school students. Schools can split the bursaries the way that they see fit and choose their own criteria and theme. And the sad news, it was mentioned that the passing of Rhonda Boucher, EPCA member and past president, it was recommended that a letter of PC's condolences be sent to her family. And the next and final PC meeting of the school year will take place on June 5th, and it will be in person. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, Anna? Yes, Anna? Yes. Um, I just wanted to uh, convey my condolences also and to all who are very close to Rhonda. And I have very, very fond memories of great spring conferences, great discussions with her and her dedication uh, for parents. And um, at one point, I was the parent uh, liaison uh, uh, for QESBA. And we had the opportunity to really uh, work together. And it was great. So she will be greatly missed. Thank you very much. You. Any other questions or comments? No. OK. Uh, next is the special needs advisory report. Hi, good evening. Um, we have concluded all our meetings for the year, so we have nothing to report, but just a friendly reminder, if you're a parent and you're looking to join, uh, keep a lookout uh, early next year before school starts. There will be um, 
uh, information on social media, emails uh, potentially sent to you to go ahead and apply to be a part of our committee. Um, so other than that, thank you and have a good evening. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions or comments for Carrie? Nope, seeing none. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, committee reports. Um, the executive, we did have a meeting from uh, over the month. Uh, transportation. Uh, transportation, there's no report, but we will be having a meeting on June 13th. Okay. Audit, material resources, finance, material resources. Sorry, I was having trouble okay. unmuting. Um, our committee met on May the 15th, um, and the uh, from the financial side, uh, Mr. Bergeron advised us that in terms of the budget 2023-2024 financial parameters, uh, they are still not available, making it very difficult to plan for the next year. The deadline, as you may remember, to present an initial budget is June 30th, 2023. So the finance department is going to try to have the input of the schools and centers and services, but most likely finance will have to go ahead and do their best with preparation of the initial budget due to the time um, squeeze. Uh, at the beginning of the school year, the school's center and services will uh, send their initial budget in for the year 2023-24. And I see that Mr. Bergeron has raised his hand, so I'm sure he must have an update for us. Yes, the good news is that we received the uh, financial parameters last Thursday. So when we did the meeting, we didn't have it, but we received it last Thursday. So. We pass all the information to all directors and we're starting to work on the initial budget for next year. Oh, that's very good. Thank you. Uh, RTL negotiations for 2023-24. Um, RTL will modify their service offering for SLI by merging to existing bus routes. And in doing so, RTL will not charge 72,000, which they had previously, they said they would for an extra bus for Centennial Regional. In addition, we have been um, approached by the company EXO to see if they could take over two bus routes in the La Prairie area for 2023-24 and negotiations are underway and uh, we will require a final uh, decision on that. Uh, Dossier by the end of May. There's no update, Mr. Bechevin, on that? No? No, we're still yeah. working with them. We're waiting for some information from the ministry. So uh, hopefully we, we will have to take a decision before the end of May. Good. And then when we turn to material resources uh, with Mr. Gagnon, uh, we reviewed the resolution that is before us tonight for the hiring of a professional for the addition of the gymnasium at Reach Green in St. Lambert. It was reviewed uh, for the hiring of the architectural firm. Uh, according to the um, LCOP for the amount of this contract, the engineers will be selected from, pre, from the pre-qualified firms. And in fact, uh, the selection committee did meet and we had two firms uh, which were um, submitted uh, doc, um, uh, quotes and uh, we will be, uh, and one of them was selected by that committee. And that is the, what we covered in our report and the next meeting uh, will be at the call of the chair. Are there any questions? No? Well, thank you very much. You need to speak louder, Dan. You're on mute. The hall's on mute. Hall's on mute. It's good now. It's okay now. <laughs> thank you. 
Uh, I, I forgot to mention that we did meet on May the 2nd and we did adopt the calendar of the meetings for the executive on that date. So thank you very much. And uh, go on to the next item, which is governance and ethics. Uh, no report. No report. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, HR, human resources. Commissioner Ronning will be reporting tonight for us. Oh, okay. Hi, good evening again. Uh, the HR committee had met on Monday, May 1st. Uh, one of the topics that we had reviewed was the retirement gala, which we'll speak on tonight. The retirement gala is going to be held on Thursday, June 15th, 2023 from 6.45 to 9 p.m. 6.45 is the door opening. We'll have a presentation at 7.00. Um, as, as well as the recognition uh, in the auditorium. Eight o'clock is the informal cocktail reception. And this year it will be located at Centennial Regional High School. And again, we just wanna say congratulations and all well wishes to all of our uh, retirees this year. Um, heartfelt thanks for your commitment, your dedication um, and the passion that you've had with RSV. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Okay. Seeing none, thank you. Uh, communications? Yep. Um, yes. Yep. Oh, yeah. I just was... wait. Anna, just wait a sec. Aniette, you had a question? I'm sorry. I just saw your hand go up. Actually, I have a question. Um, I don't know if this is for Carrie or is if this is for uh, um, Kim, but I'd like to know when you when the HR committee will be uh, discussing administrative appointments. That usually comes uh, shortly after the the uh, um, the structure. So, and uh, we all know that uh, that Sherry Tite is retiring this year. Uh, there are many questions as to whom. Uh, you know, who will apply and who will be selected. Usually the commissioners, well, in the past, commissioners who were, who had um, students on their territory attending a school for which there was a vacancy in, in one of the uh, director positions were invited to that meeting or were at least given a heads up. I don't know if that's still happening, but um, I do have quite a few uh, students on the territory who go to Centennial, and um, I'd like to be invited to that meeting as a uh, as a spectator or a guest. Carrie, would you like me to take that? Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah. So the postings have gone up, and uh, just as soon as uh, the committee has has made some selections. I will be reaching out to the chair of the HR to find out whether we need to have a special meeting or whether we will hold one before uh, the next scheduled meeting in June for uh, council. And yes, I have. I don't think the chair has any problem inviting uh, whichever commissioners would like to attend that meeting. Not at all. We'll make okay. it open to those who attend. Yes. Actually, we have done that in the past instead of doing yeah. a work session where we just uh, invited okay. commissioners. Yep, exactly. Yep, we'll do it the same as like we've done in the past for sure. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions before I let uh, Anna complete? Oh, okay, Anna on communication. Yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, sorry for the difficulties okay. I had coming in that tonight. Um, yep. I I attended the beginning of the meeting and then I have a, because I was out of town. So I'm going to let Teresa do the full report. Uh, since you took over afterwards. So go ahead, Teresa. Thank you. Yeah, so the RSB Communication Committee met on April 25th. We looked at the graduation dates of our schools and we shared this information with our commissioners in hopes that each school will have a commissioner attending these important school events. For this year's end of school message, we are looking at setting up an appearance on the Rivsud CVRS with Brian Pitter. In addition, we are also working on a back to school message for September. We also discussed the need of an out of office messages for the summer break period to ensure that whenever someone is trying to reach the schools, they're well aware when to expect someone to be back 
and be available to respond to their inquiries. Our next meeting is scheduled for May 30th, and that's the end of the report. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments? <clears throat> thank you very much, Teresa. Moving on to uh, QESBA. Um, yes, um, as we attended the QESBA AASQ Spring Conference on May 17th and 18th in saint Sever. The Board of Directors met on the Wednesday morning. Among various important and recurring topics was the discussion of the future of English boards, Bill 40. We are expecting that Justice Lucy will render his decision by June 30th. Uh, we will be advised a day in advance, but really the morning of the judgment, one hour before it will be made public. Our lawyers will be ready to respond and will be at our offices in Dorval, where uh, there will be attendance, but uh, there will be chair, uh, chairs of different English school boards in attendance, and the rest of us uh, from the board of directors will hopefully be able to attend um, by teams. Um, and they will be ready to respond. It, it will be probably a, quite a few pages and probably not cut and dry. So it will take our lawyers to be able to look through this. As Dan mentioned, the spring conference was very well attended. Um, it was a wonderful conference and it was, I was very pleased to see uh, how we were able to finally be in person and be uh, Commissioners reuniting. Uh, I think that we had a wonderful time and uh, reconnected. It was a perfect moment for that, as well as being able to interact with our uh, directors and um, uh, our DG, our ADG, administrators, consultants, um, getting to know people that some of them, some we had not seen in person or met even in person. They were newly appointed. So it was a wonderful time for that. I was very proud to be uh, to be a uh, not only on the board of directors representing Riverside School Board, but being a commissioner uh, and being part of the community. So one of the not only very interesting, but also extremely enlightening workshops was given by Power Law and who are our lawyers that are representing us. Um, so they presented at the details mm -hmm. and issues of, are you ready for this? Bill 40, Bill 21, Bill 96, and last but definitely not least, Bill 23. So all while examining section 23 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom on Minority Language Education Rights in Canada based on jurisprudence and case studies. Mark Power, uh, the head with his, um, his colleagues walked us through the, poten uh, the potential of our community has to use the potential our community has to use Section 23 for the benefit of our students and the broader English-speaking community of Quebec. And when I say it was enlightening, it was, I think, jaws were dropping at one point. Uh, it is uh, quite something, and um, I don't even know if people realize uh, the impact that all of these have on the English community. And it's very important that we continue to represent the English community and uh, fight for our rights and the education of our students in, uh, our students in English uh, through QBSBA. Mm -hmm. On a sadder note, well, for me, sadder note, our executive director, uh, Mr. Russell Copeman has uh, officially announced his retirement and he will be leaving us as of December 31st. Very, very, very big shoes to fill, uh, though he will always be ready uh, as a consultant if we need him. So uh, I know that he will work very hard along with uh, members of the board of directors to make sure that uh, we will have a successor that will help us through uh, the very difficult times that we're uh, going to be facing. There will be a special meeting on June 9th regarding the budget uh, for the Board of Directors, but then, then the next Board of Directors meeting will take place on September 8th. And of course, once again, if all continues as is, it will be hybrid. Therefore, some people will be in attendance in person while others have the opportunity to attend online. And that is the end of my report. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for Anne? Okay, thank you. Seeing none, we'll go to the resolutions. Adoption of the policy to maintain a safe, respectful, and drug-free environment in schools. 
Whereas the policy to maintain a safe, respectful, and drug-free environment in schools has been the subject of consultation from January 14th, 2023 to February 28th, 2023. Whereas the Council of Commissioners wishes to adopt the policy to maintain a safe, respectful, and drug-free environment in schools, it is moved by Commissioner Ronning and seconded by Commissioner Horrell that the policy to maintain a safe, respectful, and drug-free environment in schools be adopted. Questions? Opposed? Abstentions? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Adoption of the calendar of meetings for the Council of Commissioners for 2023 2024. It is moved by Commissioner Ronning and seconded by Commissioner Aguirre that the calendar of meetings of the Council of Commissioners for 2023 2024 be adopted as presented and that a copy be appended to these minutes. Question? Opposed? Abstentions carried unanimously. Hiring of a, of a professional firm for the addition of a gymnasium at Reach Green in St. Lambert. Whereas Riverside School Board adopted resolution, resolution F312 2022-1018, requesting funds to proceed with this project whereas a public call for tenders was received on April 21st, 2023, and the following firms submitted their offer of services in conformity with the stipulations in the tender documentation. Architects, Julien Charpentier, architect, Leclerc, architect incorporé, whereas the selection committee was held on May 4th, 2023, and recommends to the following firms which obtained the highest scores in the quality-based evaluation process, Architects, Leclerc, Architect Incorporé, whereas this resolution was reviewed and is supported by the Audit, Finance and Material Resources Committee, it is moved by me and seconded by Commissioner Ronning that Riverside School Board accept the recommendation of the selection committee to retain the services of the firm Leclerc as architect for the addition of a gymnasium at Reach Green in St. Lambert and that the director general be authorized to sign the contracts to that effect. Thank you very much. Questions? Comments? Okay. Opposed? Abstentions? One abstention? Carried. Thank you very much. Uh, next item, correspondence. My questions from the public first. Right after the correspondence. Questions from the public? No. no. Okay, thank you. Yeah, online though. Oh, there is, oh, I'm sorry. Um, they know about uh, putting it in the question. No. If you have a question, please uh, direct yourself to the question and an answer, Q&A at the bottom, and uh, type in your question. We'll try to respond to it. So I'll just wait a few minutes. I'm Nothing in there, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry? We're good. We're good? We're good? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, bravos. Oh, Teresa, then Chris. Teresa, bravos, yes. I'd like to give two bravos. Uh, one is to SLE for their Kids Cup that they put on. It was an incredible event. It was nice to, to be able to get together again and, and to see uh, a whole community come together like they did. It was very impressive. And the other Bravo goes to SLI for their vernissage play and fundraising they did for the Upwood Adams Foundation. So Bravos mm -hmm. to these two schools. Thank you very much. Chris. My first Bravo is to the young people who joined us this evening. It was wonderful to see uh, brave, creative folks who would stand up and, and share with us their thoughts and feelings. And I really enjoyed that again this evening. I'd also like to thank the organizing committee at QESBA for a great 
training session for a great uh, conference. It was nice to see people face to face and uh, get back to what it is that we do. My third Bravo quickly was uh, a couple weeks. No, sorry, last week at Centennial, I had the, the pleasure of attending the e-fair where students created their own small businesses and shared their wares with other students. It was primarily food, so it was lovely. You should have been there, Margaret. It was tons of fun. The young people made everything from, I don't know, frozen uh, grapes with candy on them to General Dow chicken. If you ever hear of this again, go. It was a great event. Kudos to them. Hats off. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Charles? Uh, yeah, I know uh, many people talked about, um, uh, about uh, what we, we've seen tonight. Um, but through that, I, I just want to give uh, bravos to, uh, to, to Mount Bruno. Um, this is incredible uh, how they got the community together because the, the, they had that impressive panel of judges that were, that, that, that were there. Right? We talked about two different mayors. We had uh, many different people. At the same time, they even invited uh, the neighboring French school to come mm -hmm. over and watch it so we can see the relationship being created between them and the friendliness was amazing uh, one of the things though we only had a short sample of three presentations I, I just want and this is what hit me the most uh, Vidage the third person who spoke we learned that he arrived only recently uh, in Canada and uh, a few months ago well what less than a year uh, Chris that that they said less than a year ago he did not even speak French mm -hmm. so so I was I was uh, I was in awe with the work that they did with him and it's very strong in both uh, both languages so that, that that's great Final bravo I want to give is for um, Heritage. Last Friday, they had their FAF music uh, presentation. I, I am so impressed at what they can do, both for the students and how they work, the teachers, how they work with them, but also the professionalism that we have in our, uh, our tech crew and the equipment and everything. So hats off to uh, to heritage uh, and to their students thank you thank you uh, are there any other bravos before we move on okay seeing none we'll move on uh there is nothing under other business john no. uh could i have somebody you want two people to close the meeting yes, two uh, commissioner craig uh, and move seconded by oh, oh, oh. Carrie, thank you. Just saw your hand go up. Um, Pose, abstentions carried. Um, because the date of next meeting is June the 30th, however, uh, we are needing to go into a special work session dealing with the additional awards we've been, uh, that we've been requested from the government and they've agreed to that. And we have the person responsible for how the adjustment in the different wards will happen so i would really strongly encourage everyone to return so we can have a quick discussion on this issue and then we could uh, move from there okay uh and i do think it's all under the calendars so i would ask you to leave this this oh yes out of can we have a five minute break yeah sure five minute break okay yeah Thank you. not a problem so at nine o'clock, well, people who want to join can join, but uh, they're given a five minute break. We won't start till after, around nine. Okay, thank you. See you on the other.